Hello, welcome back to this channel. Today is going to be a very, very fun video because today we are going to be talking about everything to know about aquaponics. From the perfect fish to be having in your fish tank, to the perfect setup, to what actually aquaponics is. We're going to be covering everything in today's video. Before we start, please subscribe, hit the bell notification on all so you do not miss another video. And please like this video. Let's go start today's video. Now I think one of the main questions is, what is aquaponics? Aquaponics is a corporation between plants and fish. It is pretty much a system of aquaculture in which the waste produced by the fish supplies the nutrients for the plants grown hydroponically. Now, I've only had my aquaponics set up for about a month and so far, it is one of my favorite things I've ever done in the greenhouse. So, pretty much I really want to talk about my setup, everything that's worked for me, everything that hasn't worked for me. Also in this video, I really want to talk about the perfect fish, the perfect plants, and uh, the setup that I really recommend you guys getting, and the cheapest setup option. Now, when I built my setup, I was on a little bit of a tighter budget and I couldn't uh, get like a very, very nice fish tank and some other stuff that uh, I'll be covering later in today's video. But first is gonna be the fish tank. Now, I ended up getting the plastic fan because, um, to be honest, after a lot of digging through the best options, a plastic bin would work the best and it was one of the cheapest uh, things I could go with. This storage bin holds 144 quarts and all of that equals to about 36 gallons. Now, all that 36 gallons is gonna include all the water and the hoses and bottle filter in the, in the actual system. But uh, that's pretty much about maybe 45 gallons at the very end. Then for my biofilter. Now, this biofilter is more designed for a pond instead of really a aquaponic system, but it works the same for this setup too. Now, this pond filter can withstand ponds up to 1,600 gallons, which is insane. But to be honest, it works great. And if I go bigger with this setup, it's gonna be very, very good to have long term. Now, for the growing system, I ended up ordering this setup off of Amazon made a little bit of some maintenance type of stuff to put some grow lights on the top but this setup can hold 108 plant sites and is three layers of pvc so it's very very sturdy works really really good and over the last year i've not had any leaks and any problems strongly recommend that now kind of talking about the very last thing which is going to be the grow lights these grow lights are off of amazon too they're two feet long and each light is 150 watts. Now, I will say after a lot of testing with the grow lights in the last uh, year, I really feel like they aren't 150 watts, so maybe about 120 for the most. Plus I've kind of done some wattage checks on them and they don't exactly equal up to 150. In the end, it's a great setup. Uh, I really want to hear your guys' opinions what kind of setup you guys have, or if you guys are planning to build a setup, I'll be covering that next. Now, talking about all the supplies that you need for a perfect aquaponic system, I ended up creating this huge list of the cheapest methods that I've used, I've considered using, so I'll be talking about as many of those as possible in today's video. So we'll go into a different video, but I'm gonna try to talk about the main stuff now. So, fish tank, very, very big thing. There's a lot of things you have to have in the fish tank in order for the fish to survive and you don't have to go to the fish store every single day to get the fish. First thing is gonna be an air pump. You have to have oxygen in the water to help the fish live and just thrive in that uh, climate. So, then you can have plants in there. You don't have to have the plants. I recommend it because it helps the fish uh, survive a little bit better, makes them enjoy the fish tank a little bit more. You can get real ones or you can get fake ones. It doesn't really matter. Real plants will be a little bit of more of an experience, a little bit more to research uh, and see what the plants are good for and how big they do get. But personally, I'm going fake right now. Plus they're way cheaper than real plants. Then rocks. You don't have to have rocks too, but I ended up getting rocks just so I can just Create a good area for the fish, help them survive even better, plus it looks really good when you're actually filming and looking at the fish tank, so that's kind of a plus about it. Then, you're also going to need a heater 
to keep the water at a constant temperature, especially when it's winter and uh, the room really kind of fluctuates from the temperature uh, to 70 to 60 degrees within an hour. It can hurt the water in the fish tank. So usually I keep mine about 71, seven, somewhere in between that area, 70 to 72 degrees. We did have some hotter times where it went up to 76, but we ended up trying to bring that down really, really quick. Uh, now, I will be covering a little bit of some more fish stuff, and when you do get your uh, fish, there's some very, very big things you need to know uh, because you can't just dump them into the water. So, now talking about the biofilter. Biofilter, it's pretty simple. Biofilters are about 80 to 120 dollars. Uh, that's about the range I was going for. Mine was a little bit more on the expensive range. It was about 120 dollars. I ended up getting a more of an upgraded one with more filters. Uh, I recommend getting the one with two different nozzles. One is more uh, sewage type of water going straight to the plants and the other one is clean water where it filters it a lot more and that water can go back into the fish tank. It doesn't have to stop with the plants first. Then, hoses. You have to have hoses to move the water around. Then you're gonna need a good pump. The pump is very, very uh, necessary. Uh, some biofilters, you can do compressed air to really kind of just force the air through, but those are more on the $400 range, which is very, very, very expensive. So, I don't really exactly have a recommendation for the wattage on the pump. Just try to get something that you think would be strong enough. Definitely not a 5, definitely not a 10 watt. Uh, I'm pretty sure mine is about a 25 watt pump. Uh, if you do have a much bigger fish tank, a much bigger setup than mine, I recommend maybe a 40. Uh, watt one, but that's also just to work from me. You could get a lot more powerful one, but it might uh, create some problems over time. Then, for the main system, you're going to need just something good to hold the plants in. I really strongly recommend the PVC design. Now, you will have to do some kind of DIY projects with this to kind of bring some grill ice to the top. This system can also go outside. You will have a lot of algae forming it, but at the end of the day, that is still fine. Then, Grow lights, we covered that a little bit a second ago. Amazon has some really, really good ones. Now, grow lights are a little bit expensive for a startup cost. They're somewhere around uh, $40 to $80, but those are more just kind of packs of them. Uh, I think the latest one I looked at was $80, and that was a pack of six grow lights. So they do get pretty expensive really, really quickly. So just kind of keep that in mind. So if you guys are planning to be on a very, very tight budget or if you guys are going to spare no expense for the setup, uh, I really, really recommend kind of just going with the cheaper option and over time experiment with it. Um, maybe wherever you're getting your stuff, you can return that stuff if you haven't used it yet. But uh, I really recommend kind of testing over time. I've actually done a lot of testing in the last month with like my ear pump. I do not like my air pump at all, I'll just say that. I recommend getting more of a powerful air pump. That's been about $6 a line, which is pretty cheap. I recommend spending about $20-ish to get a good air pump that can last a long time. And mine, mine tends to overheat. Now, $7 one running 24-7, uh, not really the best option for it. Then, this is major for the setup. You have to have good airflow, good ventilation uh, from fans under the setup blowing air up. Not really the best method because if you have a leak then you have a huge problem, but just good airflow where all the heat that the grow lights are producing can be moved with new air, new clean and healthy air for the plants. Plus, it really, really helps the plants survive a lot better. I actually just ordered a fourth fan that will go on the other side of the plants too to really help, but that is pretty much it for the main setup there are a lot of other things you could get a lot of things you could get with like um with your fish tank you could get a rock formation that would be very very good for the fish to have a good home in and it might be a great area for the plants to kind of grow up on if you are getting real plants so let's go ahead and talk about the fish and plants that are best in an aquaponic system now there are so many fish you can use in the system. Pretty much it does not matter what kind of fish you have in the system. But I ended up creating a list of every fish that is 
strongly recommend it. And in the end, I picked my two favorite that I've either worked with in the past or I want to work with in the future. So, first one's going to be Goldfish. Now, if you guys have watched the channel before, we are working with Goldfish currently. That is what our system's operating on. Then you can also do Catfish, Koi Fish, Trout, Bass, Bluegill, Angelfish, Guppies, or Salmon. Now, the two I would recommend is going to be Goldfish and Koi. Now, all of these are great options, but the reason why I picked both of those is because they can survive really, really good at various water conditions through just uh, cold water to more, I wouldn't say really hotter water, more room temperature, a little bit hotter than room temperature. Uh, but they're also a very, very good waste producer. Now, that can be good or that can be bad. Now, if you get too many fish and your system can't withstand that much waste, that can be a very, very bad thing. But it can also be good because if you only have a few fish, it's very, very good for the, all the plants, the biofilter, because the biofilter is not going to be working as hard as uh, it could be. So it just won't put as much stress on the system. So if you do get goldfish, don't get a ton. I ended up getting 15, and 15 is a lot. I pretty much recommend maybe eight for this system. So, Goldfish is also a really, really good, cheap startup. So, if you're planning to start with just something cheap, then over time you want to learn, and then maybe switch to like something fancier, maybe like bluegill, or like uh, salmon, something bigger. I really, really strongly recommend Goldfish, because Goldfish is cheap if you make a mistake, uh, it's not like you just threw $40 out the door. Uh, now, Goldfish is really kind of just a mix of price, depending what store you go to. Now, my local fish store is going to be Petco. So, I know that store has uh, fish for $0.50, cents, even smaller fish that are like $0.30. Cents. Then they have nicer Goldfish, uh, fancy varieties of them that are about uh, $15, I think. So I ended up going with the 50 cents one and I ended up getting 15. Now you can also get snails for your fish tank to clean the outside of it to kind of prevent or lower the risk of algae forming too fast. Now, the second one I recommend is gonna be koi fish. Now, this one is pretty much the same as goldfish, but koi fish get a little bit bigger. Well, koi fish get a lot bigger than goldfish, but kind of the things that makes Koi fish stand out is they can withstand a wide range of pH levels, which is really, really good, and they can survive temperatures from 35 up to 85 Fahrenheit, which is really, really good for a fish. So, at the end of the day, I would definitely pick koi fish at the end of the day. I really like um, the color on koi fish. I really just found koi fish just super fascinating. and. Uh, so, I am still currently working with goldfish, and I'll probably be working with those for the next year. Now, if you guys have any other questions about this, please comment that down. I'd really love to answer your questions. Now that we've covered fish, let's go ahead and move over to the plants. Now, with this list too, I have a ton of ones I do recommend, but in the end, I'll be picking my all-time favorites that I've worked with, or that I'm hoping to work with in the future. So, starting the list off, you can grow lettuce peppers, kale, tomatoes, strawberries, basil, cucumbers, spinach, mint, squash, beans, cilantro, and parsley. So at the end of the day, you can pretty much grow any herb you want in the system. Some won't do as good as the others, but most of them can survive very, very well and absolutely thrive in this type of a system. Now, the ones I would recommend is obviously gonna be lettuce. I worked with that pretty much last year. I've had some struggles with that, but in the end, I've learned a lot. We'll be covering a lot about lettuce very, very soon. Now, the next ones I'm going to be recommending is going to be tomatoes. I'm currently working with tomatoes right now. Now, the next ones I'm going to recommend is going to be strawberries. Strawberries can get a little bit nervous in the side of the system, especially if you are transplanting it from soil into the actual system. Sometimes you can have a lot of problems with the roots root rot, you can have uh, the roots burn from just the amount of nutrients and uh, just a lot of things can go wrong in that area. We are actually growing strawberries in my hydroponic system and we've had some problems with that but we're going to be doing a lot of videos very very soon working on those strawberries. 
we actually hope to have an entire system go with strawberries in the next year. So, then the next ones I'm going to be recommending is going to be spinach, mint, cilantro, and parsley. All of those are very, very simple. You just plant the seeds and just let them grow. Uh, some of them do a little bit better than the others. Parsley will struggle a little bit in the beginning, the first probably about uh, three weeks, and then by the month mark, they'll be starting to thrive. Once the roots are built on the actual plant, that's when the plant starts to absolutely grow, it starts to thrive, and it really, really starts to just, just absolutely thrive. Then, the final one I'll be recommending is gonna be cucumbers. Now, even though cucumbers do put out an absolutely insane root structure, they can be very, very good if you just want a few cucumbers from it. You can take the plant out, replace it with a baby plant, and let it do the same thing. I'm actually going to be working with that later this month. So if you guys want to check out that series, I'd really love it if you would. And this is going to be the end of the video. If you guys like these types of videos, please subscribe. Hit the bell notification on all. So if you do not miss our video, please like this video. Now, I would really love to hear in the comments what type of system you were going with. After this video, are you 100% locked in to getting an aquaponic system? What kind of fish are you getting? What kind of plants are you going to be growing in it? What type of setup are you going to be working with? I'd really love to hear that from you guys in the comments below. And this is going to be the end of the video. So I really, really appreciate all of you guys watching today's video and supporting the channel. And I'll see you guys tomorrow when we post next. Peace. If you guys are new to the channel, you can subscribe up here. If you guys want some more high quality content, you can check out our newest video right here, or you can check out our recommended video down here.